this series called True Virtue. And I want to read to you today from Psalm uh, 15, Psalm of David. He says this, David is asking some questions. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live in your holy mountain? In other words, who can experience the goodness and the presence and the peace of God? Who may dwell with you, God? And when he answers and he says, the one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor, and casts no slur on others. Who may dwell in the presence of the Lord? Well, he's talking about those who live and walk with integrity. He goes on to say in verse 5, those who lend money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against innocence, whoever does these things will never be shaken. Whoever walks uprightly in the fear of the Lord, whoever lives with integrity will not be shaken. I read an article about a person who had lost a wallet, and very unfortunately it had a large sum of money in it, a good sum of cash, and a good Samaritan found the wallet with all the money and returned it to the person that lost it. And the author of this article was shocked. The person who got his money back was shocked, and all the commentators were shocked. They were shocked. They said, I can't believe that the guy returned so much money. And I thought to myself, isn't it tragic that we live in a world where people are more shocked by integrity than by the lack of integrity? And maybe it shouldn't be a shock. Because I know, like you, every day you open up a news app, you read on social media, you'll find another leader, another celebrity, another politician, another whoever has, has fallen. Something's come up. Something's come to light. And sometimes you can see it in a friend or a family member who claims what one thing but then lives another. And that's why the title of today's message is A Matter of Integrity. But what is integrity? Well, let's start with first what integrity is not. Integrity is not perfection. This is not what it, it means. Meaning if you do something wrong, you know, somebody can't just say, aha, you have absolutely no integrity. To live in integrity doesn't mean that you never make a mistake. If that were the case, then only Jesus would have been able to have said to live the life of integrity. Instead, what we're looking for in a life of integrity is what we might call an integrated life. And in fact, the word integrity comes from the root Latin word integer, which actually means whole. It means whole. It means complete. It means one. What would that look like in our life? Well, too often in our lives, what ends up happening is many of us compartmentalize how we live. We have a you know, compartment where we say, okay, this is my professional life, this is what I do at work, this is how I am there. We have another compartment for our family life, or another for social life. This is who I am, this is how I act there. There's a compartment for spiritual life. How I am, what I do in church, stuff. And then there's one compartment that no one is allowed to see or to know. Well, this is private. My thought life. Who I am, how I act, in my heart, in my mind, in my innermost thoughts. And so often we are tempted to just reinforce all of these compartments. We have a 
professional life is separate from our spiritual life because we don't want to offend anyone in a professional life with our spiritual beliefs. But when we get into family life, we keep our private life separate because we don't want our family to know what we do in private or think in the privacy of our mind. When we go into our, our social life, we act different from what we do in our spiritual life, which is profoundly different to our private life, our innermost thoughts. And then without realizing it, we actually live a very compartmentalized life where we live and we act and we think differently, radically differently, in each compartment. And that is not integrity. Integrity is holistic. As followers of Jesus, we want to be him to be Lord, to direct all of our lives. So we're not broken into those little compartments. So this is what I say in front of one group. This is what I do in front of another group. This is what I do over here at this time. But I say we want to glorify Jesus in all we do. Jesus directs our actions in our professional life. Jesus leads our relationships in our family and our social life. Jesus is the core, the center of our family. We're not just a Christian family, but we're a family centered around the teachings of Jesus Christ. Jesus drives and is lowered over our private life, our innermost thoughts. His friends, it's not private from him. Instead of having a compartmentalized life, we want to have an integrated life centered on the goodness, the power, the glory, the truth of Jesus. So what is integrity? We might say it this way. Integrity is when your behavior matches your beliefs in all spheres of life. It's what you show on the outside, a true reflection of what you believe on the inside and vice versa. In Proverbs 10, verse 9, Scripture tells us this, Whoever walks with integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Remember when you were a kid and you've done something wrong and you knew it was wrong, and there was a great fear that was burning kind of in your heart around you. I hope mom and dad don't find out. You're not walking securely at that point, are you? You're wondering and hoping and perhaps praying that you don't get caught out. I've heard it say that, said that integrity is when your private life is consistent with your public life. It's who you are when no one is looking. But it's different to reputation. Reputation is who others think you are. Integrity of the upright will guide them. It's, it's what is the opposite then of integrity? It has nothing to do with reputation. What is the opposite of integrity? Well, it's hypocrisy. And you'll remember from other times we probably shared this that the word hypocrite comes from the Greek word hypocrites. And the ancient Greek plays, ancient Greeks, they would have these plays, and they'd have these actors who would wear these kind of ridiculous kind of masks when they were kind of doing their plays, portraying different characters. And so the actors would change out the masks as the characters changed. And that's Hippocrates. So in a similar way, we know that a hypocrite is that they're a different person behind that mask that you see. I'm showing you an exterior that is inconsistent with who I really am. That's a hypocrite. And what's fascinating is that when you read scripture, you'll notice that Jesus was harsher on hypocrites than perhaps on anybody else, prostitutes, adulterers. Anytime you see him address a hypocrite, he really comes down hard on them. Not just for living the wrong way, but claiming what was right when they were actually living the wrong way. And I 
example of this you can find in Matthew chapter 23. And this is where Jesus, he absolutely demolishes the Pharisees for being hypocrites. You know what that ought to be like. And we're going to be looking at verse 25 and 26. You can check out the whole chapter yourself afterwards. But in verse 25, this is what he says. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will be clean. Well, what was Jesus saying? In many ways he was saying it's not just what you show on the outside of it that matters, what's on the inside matters. Have integrity. We want an integrated life. We want Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the way, the truth, the light, the living water, the bread of life, the true vine. We want Him to direct and guide and empower every area of our life. It's not compartmentalized. It's integrated around the truth, the glory, the love, the grace, the power and the direction of who Jesus is. I'll talk to the parents for a moment. You are building a legacy. You're building your home. What happens in your home matters more than you can ever imagine. In my years of working in and around the church, what I've seen is the fastest way to raise rebellious kids is to claim one thing but to live something different in the home. The fastest way to turn your children against God and the things of God is to claim the things of God publicly and to live far away from the things of God in your private life. You're building your own home. You're building a legacy. Every day, every decision, every interaction you have with people, you don't want to be compartmental live an integrated life and it's driven by the grace and the truth, the beauty, the power and the love of the person of Jesus Christ. And I have a question for all of us to consider today. What's your integrity worth? What is your integrity worth? Because in our fallen humanity, if we're honest, and we look at ourselves honestly, we probably have price, right? There's a point at which we might compromise. And so what I ask you, when I ask you, what is your integrity worth? Another way of saying is this. What would your actions say that your integrity is worth? For example, if someone were to, someone were to lie on a resume or interview to get a job that pays you know, 50 grand, 80 grand, 100 whatever it is, well, that's what their integrity is worth to them. You're selling out for a certain price if you falsify an expense report or you embezzle something from your work. What is your integrity worth? And what do your actions say your integrity is worth? I saw, I saw a story recently of a restaurant in Toronto who is actually helping employees cheat their companies by renaming their menu items. So that when people would order and it would show up on the receipt, it would show up as office supplies. It seems kind of devious, doesn't it? Until your supervisor calls you in and says, you know, John, I see you've ordered 10 whiteboards and five computer stands for your cubicle this month. Uh, what's up with that? Your integrity might be worth a ream of paper when you took home for private use. If you cheat in an exam to get a better grade. Or if you exaggerate on a story that someone, someone might like you better. What is your integrity worth? And what would your actions say? Friends, it should be worth a lot to you. Because if you have integrity, 
nothing else matters, and if you don't have integrity, nothing else really matters. Psalm 139, which I read for us. That's where I want you to spend a moment with me. It's a very powerful prayer that David says here. Incredibly difficult to pray. Very vulnerable prayer to pray. And this is one that I'm going to invite you to pray, perhaps today, perhaps this week. In verse 23 and 24. Search me, God. Know my heart. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Search me, God, and know my heart. Is there any part of my life that's compartmentalized, that isn't integrated around the truth and the goodness of Jesus? Search my heart. The reason that this is a very difficult prayer is because Scripture teaches us, above all things, our heart is deceitful. It's very difficult to see the truth because our heart lies to us all the time. And I'm going to ask you, is there any area of your life that you're open to the prompting of the Holy Spirit? might need some correction out of a compartmentalized life into an integrated one. Well, there's three things that I would encourage you to just kind of examine to see if you might find an area that you might, first of all, look at where you are the most defensive. Where are you the most defensive? Consider this before the Lord. Where are you the most defensive? Because what I find for me is where, where I'm most defensive often reveals where I'm most vulnerable. Where are you most defensive? Next, number two. What don't you want others to know? Now that wouldn't be me. I never do that or even think that. Ask yourself what you don't want others to know. We spoke earlier about keeping a private life away from others. What's in your heart? What's in your mind? Consider that before the Lord. What don't you want others to know? And thirdly, where do you criticize others? Ask yourself, what do you often criticize others about? Where do you criticize others? What I find is that where you criticize the hardest is often a reflection of where you are indeed the weakest. Search my heart, O oh God. See if there's any offensive way in me. So what do you do when God shows you that? What do you do on the outside is very different than what you claim on the inside. Well, I encourage you to acknowledge any area. Search me, O oh God, just pray and listen and be still before Him. And acknowledge any area where your actions are inconsistent with what God's Word teaches. Maybe you talk really bad about people to make yourself feel better. Maybe you gossip. Maybe you make it sound spiritual. Well, I'm just telling you so you can pray for her. Oh, she needs more of Jesus. What you do. Maybe it's your taxes, you cut corners and all the ways around it, you try to pay, try to avoid paying what you really owe. Maybe you claim the spiritual life, and right now you're struggling with a secret sin. I encourage you to acknowledge it before God. Search me, God, know my heart, test me to see if there's any offensive way. Is there any part of my life that I've compartmentalized, not integrated with the love and the grace of Jesus? And then just confess it before God. And let Him cleanse you. Let Him forgive you as He does. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let God 
changed you. Let Christ be master over your integrity. Let him take charge of it. Here's the truth. Talent can get you to the top, but only integrity will keep you at the top. Because when you have integrity, nothing else matters. And if you don't have integrity, nothing else really matters. What's difficult is there's going to come times you're going to have to try to have the courage to do the right thing. But you know that the right thing can be very, very challenging for you in your life. Consequences could come. What I try to tell myself is this. With God's help, I'm going to do the right thing and trust God with the results. I'm going to do what is right and trust God with the results because I've discovered your integrity is easier to keep than it is to recover. People are more shocked by integrity than they are by the lack of it. So in the very same way that God shocked the world while we were still sinning, he sent his son Jesus, while we were still cursing him, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. In the very same way that we as integrated followers of Jesus continue to shock the world, love, with generosity, with grace, and with integrity. May they look on and say, I may not really believe what they believe, but man, they sure believe it. The way they give, the way they love, the way they serve, so genuine. Maybe that Jesus that drives them is genuine too. True virtue, integrity. When you're making your matches, your beliefs, no separate compartments. Whole. Hypocrisy, opposite of integrity. Behaving and speaking distinctly different in all the different spheres of your life. So consider is there an area in your life where behavior Behavior doesn't always match up with your beliefs. How has that difference affected you? How has it affected others around you? Search me, God. Know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. challenge you to consider that today. And how can you take the step towards living with more integrity this week? Well, would you give Christ your life that he may unite it under him and it may be whole under his wonderful grace? Friends, he deserves all that I have. sing this song together, this chorus. All that I am. Sorry, that's a little small bit. That's familiar to us. And as we do, consider that before the Lord. Search my heart. Search my heart. Is there any offensive way in me, Lord? Because you deserve all that I am and all that I can be. Come to the mercy seat, someone will pray with you.
we sing this song, it's almost like, okay, we're giving this over to you. But it's His. He bought us back. It's His. Let's not rebel anymore. Let's bring that thing that He's been speaking to us for Him and lay it at His feet and say, Lord, You are the Lord. You are the King of this. Even this thing. Even this. And I know You see it, Lord. Even though I try to hide it, I know You see it. Your blood paid for this too. And You want it. You want all of me. All that I am. Let's sing that again. Sing our benediction together.